into the last in the series of Martin Clunes Islands of the Pacific. But now, it's the STV News at 6. Tonight, Hamza Youssef quits as Scotland's first minister, walking up to the lectern in Butte House for the final time. He stepped down before he was ousted and became emotional. I'm so grateful, I'm so blessed for having the opportunity that are afforded to so few. He'd been billed as the continuity candidate, but lasted little over a year. His time could be described as turbulent. We'll have reaction from across the country. I just feel quite sad for him. It's all right, he wasn't as good as Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> Who is next? We'll look at the runners and riders to take over in the top job. I've been talking to all the key players and I'll be telling you what they've had to say. I'm Kellyanne Woodland. This is the STV News at 6, live from Holyrood. Good evening. What next for the SNP? Hamza Youssef has resigned as Scotland's first minister. After more than a year in the role, his demise came as he faced a vote of no confidence after terminating the power-sharing agreement his party had with the Greens. As the search begins for a successor, there are calls for a Scottish election. In the meantime, Youssef will remain in the hot seat in charge of a minority government. While our political editor, Paul Mackay was in Butte House for the resignation statement. Colin, what did you make of it? Well, it was a stark contrast to last Thursday. He was upbeat then, just after sacking the Greens, but since then he's been facing the sack himself with those confidence votes looming. They haven't gone away this week yet. So today I think he jumped before he was pushed. He said he might have been saved by Alba, but he was not willing to trade his values to retain power. He said again today that he did the right thing in ending the Butte House agreement with the Greens but he knows that he mishandled that breakup spectacularly. In fact, do you remember that famous clip of Hamza Youssef falling off his scooter in the Scottish Parliament today? I think this was the political version because both of them left him flat on his face. And our political correspondent Ewan Petrie tells the story of Hamza Youssef's resignation. Four days after ditching the deal with the Greens, Good afternoon. the First Minister was back behind the Butte House lectern. At midday, Hamza Yusuf announced he was stepping down, ahead of two votes of no confidence this week. I am not willing to trade my values and principles or do deals with whomever simply for retaining power. Therefore, after spending the weekend reflecting on what is best for my party, for the government and for the country I lead, I've concluded that repairing our relationship across the political divide can only be done with someone else at the helm. I have therefore informed the SNP's National Secretary of my intention to stand down as party leader and ask that she commence as a leadership contest for my replacement as soon as possible. Hamza Youssef will remain First Minister until a successor is found. With his wife watching on, he became emotional as he addressed his family directly. To my wonderful wife, my beautiful children and my wider family for putting up with me over the years. I'm afraid you will be seeing a lot more of me uh, from now. You are truly everything to me. The withdrawal of support from the Greens left Hamza Youssef with few options. We've made good relationships and friendships. I think we've worked really well together. Um, and I think we're all sad to, to see where we've come to there. But I, on the political side, it was a political decision that he made last Thursday to unilaterally end the Butte House Agreement. And today's announcement is the inevitable consequence of that. Suggestions of an arrangement with the Alaba party had not gone down well with some within the SNP. I'm not sure how anyone um, in the SNP could object to the idea of progressing towards independence. That was one of my key themes where I wanted to see progress. So I'm not sure what that says about the SNP, that they were unable to consider putting progress on independence and protecting women's rights at the heart of government. 
For now, both the Conservatives' motion of no confidence in Hamza Youssef and Labour's in the Scottish Government still stand. There is no doubt that he wanted to continue as First Minister, to continue with his reckless policies that have damaged Scotland, but facing a vote of no confidence brought forward by the Scottish Conservatives, he looked on course to be defeated and he has jumped before he was pushed. We have no confidence in this SNP Government's ability to deliver functional government. They are chaotic, they're divided. I don't think just changing the leader at the top is going to change that. And secondly, it should be for the people of Scotland to decide who leads this country, not a backroom deal within the SNP. I still think that there is a, an unmet or pent-up desire to have that day in court, as it were, the, the, a reckoning for what's happened, so that the next First Minister of Scotland, who will be the second without a popular mandate, without having a general election behind them, will understand that this parliament won't be pushed around. Thank you very much. Hamza Yusuf departs, having triggered his own downfall. The SNP begins the search for a new leader and this parliament's third first minister. Ewan Petrie, STV News. So will it be third time lucky for the SNP? Well, whoever succeeds will have bridges to fix. Hamza Yusuf himself said he had underestimated the hurt and upset he'd caused the Greens. And repairing that relationship can only be done with someone else in charge. Well, Colin, is this symptomatic? What was his time like in office? He's been important as the first Muslim first minister of Scotland, but... It's been a difficult time from the start. The leadership contest that he won was absolutely brutal. You remember the SNP leaders debate on STV when Kate Forbes delivered that damning assessment of him that when he was Justice Secretary, the police were stretched to breaking point. When he was Health Secretary, we had the longest ever NHS waiting list. And what did he think would make it any better if he was First Minister? Well, the reality is that it didn't get much better than that. His poll ratings were poor. Over the the, the year or so that he was First Minister, there were 12 council by-elections. The SNP didn't win one of them. Then there was that terrible result for the SNP in the Rutherglen by-election. Labour got their biggest ever swing from the SNP in that. So he inherited a bad hand, and I don't think he played it particularly well. But Vanessa Taff has been looking back at Hamza Youssef's ministerial career. I therefore declare Humza Yusuf duly elected as the Scottish National Party leader. He promised to be the continuity candidate. We have a lot of work to do and get on with, so I suggest we go on with it. Instead, he faced crisis after crisis. Just days after his swearing in as First Minister, the SNP's chief executive, Peter Murrell, was arrested. He's since been charged with embezzlement of SNP funds. It's been pretty personally painful, if I'm honest. This was followed soon after by his predecessor and friend, Nicola Sturgeon's arrest. She was released without charge as the investigation continues. His path to the top job wasn't a smooth one. A sign of things to come. The youngest person to hold the role and the first from a Scottish, Asian and Muslim background. Hamza Youssef spent most of his 13 months as First Minister reacting to events rather than setting the political agenda. Policies like the deposit return scheme reversed. Angering Scottish business owners and causing the UK government to step in. I will say for the fourth time that Michael Matheson admits to making mistakes in the handling of this issue. He staunchly defended the use of public funds for an £11,000 iPad roaming bill by his then health secretary. At his party's conference, what he hoped would be a flagship policy. I can announce to the people of Scotland that next year your council tax will be frozen. Yeah! And that's the SNP delivering for people. But it delivered fury from council leaders. Amid all the political challenges, he faced a personal one. His in-laws were stuck in war-torn Gaza when the conflict broke out in the Middle East. His handling of the sensitivities around Gaza and Israel saw him successfully navigate religious divides between both communities here. The introduction of the controversial hate crime bill saw Hamza Youssef yet again defending a key government policy, insisting it wouldn't harm free speech. Gender identity policies have deeply divided his party, causing the UK government and Supreme Court to intervene. 
critics also feel Hamza Youssef isn't leaving behind a clear route to independence. And it's made possible a number of achievements, but it has served its purpose. His decision to ditch the Butte House power sharing agreement with the Scottish Greens, the handling of that breakup and the abandonment of key climate pledges has been a decision which was ultimately unsurvivable. His time in office less about legacy and more about missteps. Vanessa Taff, STV News. So Colin, what state does Hamza Youssef leave things in? Well, he leaves a fractured party facing a difficult general election and a minority government facing a bucket load of parliamentary problems. Now, I know he was facing two confident votes in Parliament this week, but I never thought he would get that far. I think he would have seriously struggled to get through his Cabinet meeting tomorrow morning with someone standing up and saying, hang on a minute, you're not wearing any clothes, you know, the Emperor's new clothes scenario. So today, he told the SNP that he will stand down as leader. The national executive of the SNP will meet tonight to draw up a timetable for nominations for his successor. Now that could lead to a contest like we saw last year, although that was brutal, or someone could be unopposed in the way that Nicola Sturgeon was in 2014. But when his successor as SNP leader is in place, that's when he'll step down as First Minister and they'll be voted in. So that leads us on to ask who's next? Well, John Swinney is emerging as everybody's favourite tonight. Health Secretary Neil Gray and Education Secretary Jenny Goruth were both names in the frame and they are both backing him. So too is Deputy Leader of the SNP Keith Brown and Westminster Leader Stephen Flynn. Now Kate Forbes wouldn't have challenged uh, John Swinney last time if he'd stood and I wouldn't expect her to do that this time. I think she will probably end up backing him in some kind of deal that gets her back in Cabinet but she's not yet ruling herself out of standing so that could still happen. But John Swinney is very experienced former SNP leader. He took over from Alex Salmond in 2000 and he's a former Deputy First Minister. A year ago, he, or just over a year ago, he was the guy brokering the, the Butte House agreement with the deals, the, 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 with the Greens. He told me a year ago that he came dangerously close to going for the leadership then, but he preferred to spend more time with his family instead. But today, he says he's seriously considering it. I'm giving very careful consideration to standing to be the leader of the SNP. I've been somewhat overwhelmed by the requests that have been made of me to do that, uh, with many, many messages from many colleagues across the party. So I'm giving that issue very active consideration, and it's likely I'll have more to say about that in the days to come. Now, John Swinney is so much of a front-runner that some of the bookies have already stopped taking bets on him today. But he was also, as I said earlier, one of the architects of the Butte House Agreement with the Greens. Now, he's not going to put that back together, but it means that they could get some kind of agreement on things like budgets to get them through as a minority government. But he also has to unite his own party at the same time, although I think that should work for him because he has an unrivaled loyalty to the SNP. But it's not going to be easy. It does, however, look like he is probably the SNP's best bet in tough times. All right, Colin, we'll, we'll hear from you later in the programme. Well, as Colin said earlier, the turmoil in the SNP comes with a general election expected later this year, but which could be called at any time. Well, our Westminster correspondent Paris Gurtsianis joins us. And Paris, what's the reaction been there? Well, Kellyanne, we've heard from the Prime Minister, who said that Scotland deserves a government focused on day-to-day -day issues, not on independence. And Keir Starmer says he despairs of the chaos, both at Holyrood and at Westminster. And he said there should be a fresh start with elections in Scotland and across the UK. So no surprise there. But it's the SNP's Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, who last week was saying he was delighted by Hamza Youssef's decision to ditch the Butte House Agreement. Today, he stood by the decision to get rid of the Greens from government, but he admitted that it had been mishandled. And despite speculation about his own leadership ambitions, today, Stephen Flynn backed John Swinney to restore stability to the SNP. We need to be in a position where we can exercise our views in the best interests of the public to promote the economy, to promote jobs, to promote resolving some of the issues in our health service and obviously to deal with the cost of living crisis. But the way that was carried out, the way he went about that? Well, 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 of course, and that's where the First Minister himself today has said that he perhaps misjudged the, the reaction 
from the Greens, a, a very strong reaction indeed. And of course, as is always the case in politics, if you don't have the, the numbers in Parliament, then you're not going to be able to, to move forward. So he took a very honourable decision today to step aside. I think that these are serious times for serious politics from serious individuals and they don't get any more serious or better or experienced than John Swinney and I sincerely hope that John comes to the conclusion that it is the right thing for him to throw his hat into the ring and he stands to be the next SNP leader, he stands to be the next First Minister and he can get on with the job of delivering for the Scottish people. And Paris, what about the rest of the SNP group at Westminster? Are they united behind John Swinney? Well, it's an important question because within six months, possibly sooner, whoever ends up leading the SNP will take the party into a general election where it's the SNP MPs whose jobs will be on the line. Uh, there's real enthusiasm for John Swinney from many, but not from all. The Edinburgh South West MP, Joanna Cherry, she posted on social media that the SNP needs a complete reset and warned against a, an unseemly rush by the old boys club to stitch up the succession. She wants Kate Forbes to stand again. That calm and stability that nationalists are craving, that may be hard to find. All right, Paris, with the latest from Westminster, thank you. Well, we've heard the reaction from the politicians, but Hamza Yusuf's resignation took some members of the public by surprise as well. So was he right to stay or go? Can the SNP ship be steadied or should the people of Scotland decide the next First Minister? Our political reporter, Laura Alderman, has been getting reaction to today's dramatic developments. There's been a weight of expectation on Hamza Yousaf after taking the reins from Nicola Sturgeon last year. In his time at the top, he often had to fight for his future. And today came the knockout blow. Well, I don't think he had much of a choice. I think the writing's on the wall. Um, I think ageing is inevitable in everything. I think this government has aged. And uh, I think that's what we're seeing now. This thing's slowly starting to fall apart. Was it right for Hamza Yousaf to go? I don't know whether it was right for him to go, but I don't think there's anybody to choose from to replace him, which is the bigger worry. I've been a big supporter of the SNP for a long time. I think we just need to find stability as soon as we can, really. He was supposed to be a safe pair of hands, someone who could smooth out tensions in the SNP after the departure of Nicola Sturgeon. But after just over a year in the job and a series of crises, Hamza Yusuf knew his time was running out. Now, the race to replace him begins. SNP member and star of TV show Make Me Prime Minister Kelly Given has a good idea of who the next First Minister should be. I would like to see some fresh blood actually. I'd like to see someone like Jenny Gilruth come in and take over. I know that there's been a lot of chat about John Swinney coming back but I do think that in a lot of ways he's old guard SNP and I think what the public needs is someone new and fresh with new ideas and I do think that someone like Jenny Gilruth really could bring that. What about Kate Forbes though? If she was to become the next First Minister how do you think that would go down? We would see different elections for other parties, we would see mass movement of our membership and I think we'd also see some additions to our membership, I'm not sure they would be welcome, um, but I, I for one would leave the party if Kate Forbes became First Minister and I know that I'm not alone in that. In Dundee, close to where Hamza Yousaf lives, shoppers' opinions were split. Not a fan at all and what? I hope Labour get in. I just feel quite sad for him. I mean I'm new into politics and I just think he's had a really rough ride of it. Best thing that could have happened. happened yeah. Do something Because he's, he's not got a clue what he's doing. It's all right. He wasn't as good as Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully someone new can come in and um, give us more opportunities, especially for young people like myself as well in Dundee. While the First Minister has a personal connection to the conflict in Gaza, demonstrators camping outside Holyrood say it's not been enough. As much as he's taken a very strong stand, I think much of his stand has just been words. And so it is... He's voiced a lot of support, which is good, and, but we hope that whoever comes next doesn't only voice support but actually acts on that support. As the first Scottish, Asian and Muslim First Minister, many insist his tenure has been inspirational. It's been beautiful, I would say. In fact, it's perhaps an odd word to use, but, you know, as Hamza has quite often said, you know, 10, 20 years ago in his resignation speech, uh, a person like him or a person like me or a person like many other people who live in Scotland perhaps wouldn't look to, to be involved in government or be involved at the highest levels of government. And, and it's been an honour, obviously, to, to see him lead. 
there was one small victory for the SNP today, being crowned top dog at a Holyrood competition. But the hurdles the party now face are a lot bigger than these ones. Laura Alderman, STV News, Edinburgh. Well, that's all from Holyrood for the moment. I'll be back later in the programme. Now, though, it's over to Raman for all the sport. Kellyanne, thanks very much. Uh, very good evening to you all. The nominations for the PFA Scotland Premiership Player of the Year have been revealed. Rangers duo James Tavernier and Jack Butland are on the shortlist, as are Celtic midfielder Matt O'Reilly and Hearts captain Lauren Shankland. Ronnie Charters has more. These are the four men nominated by their peers for the Player of the Year. The futures of three of them have been talking points this season. Lawrence Shankland has scored 28 goals for Hearts this campaign. The club have made two improved contract offers, but the striker has kept his options open. I'm getting into the last year of my, my contract at Hearts and there's always speculation and stuff kicking around and at the time, so um, there will come a time where conversations will need to be had, but for now everything's still running smoothly. I'm comfortable with my position, the club are the same, so um, we'll see what the summer brings. Matt O'Reilly was the subject of a failed bid by Atletico Madrid in January. But how did the midfielder cope with the transfer speculation? It was tough at first, just because it was something new. Like, you know, I've, I'm sure if something like that was happening in the future, I'd be able to manage it, manage it better. I don't think I managed it badly. I just think when something like that happens, it's, it's naturally there at the back of your mind. And, I don't know, the first few games was, were tough. And more recently, James Tavernier has been linked with a move to the Middle East, despite Philippe Clement insisting he's a huge part of his plans next season. Well, it's definitely not the first time there's been speculation that uh, Saudi Arabia has been brought up. You know, it's football, there's always going to be speculation. And I'm contracted to Rangers for another two seasons after this. And, you know, I'm fully focused of what I have to do this season and then concentrate on, on what's, to, what's to come next season. On the park, Jack Butland was once again called upon during Rangers' 2-1 win at St Mirren, with Serial Desert scoring the winner. It's all about results. You know, you can't play 50 games plus each year and expect everything to be perfect, everything to be smooth sailing. It doesn't work like that. Um, you have fatigue to deal with, you have injuries to deal with, you have ups and downs. Um, it's about getting over the line and getting the results. So. That's all about, that's all the, the last four or five games this season is all about, is, is getting the results. A few hours later, Celtic restored their three-point lead, thanks to a double by James Forrest in their 2-1 win over Dundee. We're top, but you keep climbing. You know, don't, well, let's not settle on just being top of the league. You know, we keep climbing, we want to achieve more. You know, we want to score as many goals as we can, be as strong defensively as we can. And... Uh, and now we get rid of him. I'm really excited about next week. Ronnie Charters, STV News. To the women's game and after Rangers defeated Celtic in the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup, midfielder Rachel Rowe says they must be at the top of their game until the end of the season if they want to win the treble. Joe Potter's side, who have already clinched the League Cup, defeated their rivals 2-0 at Hampden to progress to the final. They'll face Hearts after the Gorgie side defeated Spartans 3-0 in their last four times. The expectation is that, and, and that's the aim, is to, to win the treble. But um, we have to be consistent in our performances, which we've lacked a bit in recently. Um, but yeah, definitely Saturday's game is something that's going to boost us right back up. And finally, some tennis news. Cameron Norrie is out of the Madrid Open after losing his third round match to Casper Ruud in straight sets. That, folks, is all your sport tonight. See you again tomorrow. Thanks very much, Raman, and welcome back to Holyrood. Sir Colin, the third First Minister in little more than a year. Do you know what? It's similar to what's going on at Westminster in this now, and it is unusual, but it's not unprecedented in the Scottish Parliament either, because in the very first term, Donald Dewar tragically died. He was replaced by Henry McLeish, who barely lasted the year before being replaced by Jack McConnell. Now, he was comparatively successful. He won the 2003 Scottish Parliament election against the SNP at the time, led by John Swinney. 
And what kind of First Minister has Hamza Yusuf been, would you say, Colin? I think Hamza Yusuf has been an unfortunate First Minister. He inherited a party that was on its way down, about to be plunged deep into a police investigation into financial scandal. Now, if Nicola Sturgeon had stayed on, I think that would have forced her out of office at the time. But things that he's tried just haven't really worked. In, the, in freezing the council tax, he broke the Verity House agreement with the councils. In sacking the Greens, he broke the Butte House agreement and he's now losing his own job into the bargain. Now, his achievements in office have existed as well. He'll be remembered for avoiding NHS strikes in Scotland and showing real leadership on Gaza, especially while his family were trapped there. And don't forget that he is the first Scots Asian First Minister. That's a big deal. But just a week before the Scottish Parliament's 25th anniversary, he's been forced to quit. That turns the latest page in Holyrood's history. Another day in history. All right, Colin, thank you very much. Well, that is all from the STV News at 6 on yet another significant day for Scottish politics. Barely a year after its last leadership election, the SNP must decide again who will lead them. It means Scotland is set to have its seventh first minister since the Scottish Parliament was formed in 1999. From all of us here on the ground at Holyrood, good night.